Hey guys, my name is Lucas. Uh, my project was on Wuss's Util, which is just a little uh, command line utility that you can use to uh, administer your Wuss's server uh, if you didn't want to use the GUI part. Uh, to access it, basically uh, just open up command prompt and go to uh, this directory under program files, update services and tools. Uh, there's a lot of little cool tips and tricks that you can do. Uh, one is Wuss's Util.exe help. This will list uh, a list of commands that you can use, uh, and then it has more specific commands. If you type in uh, what's this util.exe help, and then the specific command, it'll give you little parameters and stuff that'll help you out. Uh, we're going to go over the first one here, which is check health. Uh, check health basically checks the health of the what's server. Uh, and it's, you can configure it by doing what's this util health monitoring. Uh, once you run it, it'll run a script, and then the results are written to the event logs. So if you just do util.exe check health. Uh, it'll say you can check the event logs and where it's located. Uh, if you wanted to change the parameters of this, basically you'd have to just do what's this util health monitoring. And then these are different parameters that you can set for when you check health. Alrighty guys, next one we're going to look at is uh, Wuss's Util Configure SSL, which basically updates the Wuss's server registry key after the IIS configuration. Um, you can set the parameters by typing in Wuss's Util uh, Configure SSL, and then if you wanted to like change the certificate name, uh, we'll just look at the different parameters here. Type in help. SSL. So basically you just type in the normal command, uh, what's this util, configure SSL, uh, which basically uh, it just outputs the address of the, the what's website and then the port number it's configured at. So if we do configure SSL, you see uh, we're using uh, this address server 1 and we're on server 1 right now and then what port it's under. Um, but then if you wanted to name the certificate that you were using for SSL, uh, you could use this and just name it whatever you want. Alrighty guys, next one we're going to look at is the approval commands. Uh, one of them is just uh, list inactive and remove inactive. Uh, basically this lists all inactive approvals that are configured right now. Uh, if we do what's this util list inactive approvals. It's going to say that there's no uh, permanently inactive approvals right now. Uh, if you had a server, let's say uh, your upstream server had downloaded updates in two languages, like uh, let's say English and Spanish, and then this downstream server was only configured in English, uh, the, the updates that were configured in Spanish wouldn't get approved to here since it's only approved for English. Uh, so if you had those and you didn't want you know, want them sitting there taking up space, you could do the uh, remove inactive approvals. Uh, it'll say the same thing, uh, but those would remove the approvals that wouldn't be active, uh, that weren't getting uh, approved because it was in a different language that was specified. Alrighty guys, next one we're going to look at is the import export commands. Uh, basically, they do pretty much what they say. You can either e import or export metadata uh, to an export package file. Uh, basically, you can export and import anything except for uh, update files, update approvals, or server settings. Uh, if you go to what's this? Util help import. Uh, basically, it'll give you parameters that you can use. Uh, this is pretty much a description of what I just said. Uh, if you wanted to import a package from somewhere, uh, you could import the package, which include the file name. So you'd do uh, what's this util import, and then let's say if there was a package on the C drive, you would just do this, and then the file name. So it'd be like file one. Uh, this could either import uh, either a package or a log file. It wouldn't matter what it was, uh, and that way it would just import that. It worked the same thing with the export. Uh, if you wanted to export something, you just export uh, c dash. You know, if you had that file one on this computer and you wanted to export it to an export package, uh, you could do this, and then you give that package file, uh, which you could move to another server and import it that way. Uh, this probably works the best if you don't have a network connection, obviously. 
Uh, so you could just put the package file on, let's say, a flash drive or something, put it on your other WESA server, and then import it that way. Okay, next commands we're going to look at is the front end server commands. Uh, so basically, if you needed a list of what front end servers you were using, you could just do what's this util list front end servers. Uh, basically, these are the servers that you're pulling updates from. Uh, it's pulling it from, obviously, this is the only what's this server we have configured, so it'll just be uh, server one is active, uh, and then just tells you the last time it was contacted. Uh, let's say you were taking one down and you wanted to remove it before then. Uh, you could do uh, what's util remove front end servers and then you know list the server and then you'd be able to remove that uh, and it wouldn't be pulling updates from that anymore obviously we're not going to do that now um, but that's a helpful t tool just in case you were you know taking one offline or maybe one got corrupted and you didn't want to pull the corrupted update something like that Alrighty guys, next one we're going to look at is the uh, list on Reverage package folders. Uh, basically, uh, you get a list of updates when you download from Microsoft Update that it puts in its update folder. Uh, but let's say if you got an update from Microsoft and you put it in a different folder and you wanted to see where it's referencing it from, uh, you could list this what's this util list on Reverage package folders. Uh, obviously we have none in this lab because we can't download because there's no internet connection. Uh, but if you were looking for, you know, where it's pulling those from, or you know, such as, you could list this. Okay, next command we're going to look at is the move content. Uh, basically, there's a folder where Wasis is storing all its update packages, stuff like that. Uh, let's say you install the new hard drive and you wanted to move location uh, where the server is storing its update files. Uh, this is the case when you need to move the move content. Uh, so let's do this. Wasis util move content. Uh, and then basically you're going to list the, here, I'll just do the help command first. Uh, it'll show, uh, the parameters for it is basically you do what's this util move content and then where the content is, or yeah, where, the, where you want to move the content first and then uh, the content's name, in this case it's just like updates. Uh, so if we do the what's this util uh, move content, uh, I'm just going to try moving it to the, the root C. It won't be able to move it because it is already in the root C. I just don't want to move it right now. You'll just see the, the, the contents that are right now. So if you just do updates, uh, it'll say it's being moved. Um, there we go, it'll move it. Uh, so basically it just moved the update folder uh, from the original you know directory location to uh, the root of the C drive. Okay, next command we're going to look at is the reset command. Um, so basically, uh, your WESIS settings will have uh, a list of updates that it thinks it has. Um, and then it'll, if you, if you update, you know, if you, if you try and push an update, uh, you can select those commands to push. And then it's going to look for the actual update file uh, where it's storing all the update files. Um, and let's say uh, you had just, you know, uh, gotten a new WESIS server and you were just installing the services on it and then you move the packages and you want to make sure that uh, all the listed updates you actually had the contents of the files for the update uh, you would use this reset command uh, so it would look through all the updates that it has listed uh, and then basically uh, if there was if there was ones that were listed that you didn't actually have the contents of the update for it would go out to the Microsoft website uh, and download those updates just to make sure you know the the list that you have is currently up to date. So basically, you just do uh, what's this util reset. Uh, basically, you won't be able to see what it's doing, uh, but if it was, uh, if it did find something that it needed to download updates for, it would it would say that uh, there's certain contents missing, and then it would go ahead and update those automatically from the Microsoft website. Okay. The last update or the last command line we're going to look at is the uh, use custom website. Uh, basically, if you only had one WASIS server uh, that you were just administering to, you know, the entire domain, uh, you would just want it to use port 80 for the website. Uh, that way, it would just pull updates straight from Microsoft. It wouldn't have to reference anywhere else. Uh, remember, you can use the WASIS util configure SSL. Uh, 
the NIDA list where it's pulling from, and then what port number. Uh, so basically, if you wanted to change this port number uh, from 8530 to a different one, uh, so right now this would be your custom website. Uh, let's say you didn't want to use that anymore, like I said, uh, you would do what's this util use custom website uh, false, which would just mean that you don't want to use that, you just want to use port 80. I'm going to hit enter. Sometimes if it takes a few seconds to change those settings. And then it will list the port uh, that it's using instead. So now we're using port 80. So if you do the what's util configure SSL, uh, it'll just say that we're using port 80 from now on. Uh, so you want to go back. Let's say you didn't want to do that. You can just do true again. Uh, take a few seconds again. Uh, but then it'll reconform uh, and take the web services from 8530 again. So there you go, it says you're using port uh, 8530. Uh, those are all the commands I'll go through in this video today, just because they're short five minutes. Um, but then again, just remember the help commands. Uh, you can use all these help commands to look at these, and then remember you can do what's this util help, and then you know help in front of uh, delete front end server, just to make sure you can check the parameters and stuff like that. Uh, so thanks for watching.